Alléluia. 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 Many of you are not excited. Why? Some of you look as though we have we have offended you. Yesterday we 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 went out to call some people to come inside to continue to pray. And uh, one lady told me that that she's having stomach ache. She doesn't know that we have both spiritual and physical solution. We have drugs. I took her to where there is drugs. I said, okay, give her drugs. She said, no, I'm no longer having stomach ache again. <laughs> and some people prefer to come and stay outside in the cold and sleep than to be inside to pray. But either way, uh, we are sorry, eh? Today I will start off with a little church, just a brief church. Then uh, we will thrive. Um, let me appreciate my friends and all my brothers, the ministers. Uh, I know they have suffered. You please appreciate them. And then appreciate yourself. Appreciate yourself. Appreciate yourself. Let's go to the book of Malachi 3. Malachi 3. Malachi 3. I will start from 1. Anytime that you go to Malachi, the first thing that comes into your mind is robbing God and tithe. And there are more to it than that. Is that okay? In the book of Malachi, is a strange kind of book. It's a strange kind of book because Malachi is the last book that defined the Old Testament. Of course, the book, the Bible in itself is not actually, there is nothing old in scripture. Is that okay? What you call the Old Testament is not really old as you think it is. Of course, according to the dispensation, it was divided. Okay. So, but what you believe to be your Old Testament ended in Malachi. So, when the Bible said, better is the end of something than the beginning. That means if you read Revelation, if you read, what they call it again, Genesis, you have not looked upon Malachi. There were things that you may not be able to understand. After Malachi, I think there are about 400 years, right? 400 years, and God never spoke. So after Malachi, there was no God was not talking again for 400 years. And within that time, all kinds of things happened. It was like a dark age where everybody do as he pleased because there was no longer God again. But before that, a prophet spoke. And most of the things he spoke are pivotal things. It's more like a prophecy. Okay, now. So let's look at one of those things. Because he speak about the appearing of the Lord. What I will look at is when he appears. When he appears. When he appears. Say, behold, I will send my messenger. And he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. Saving the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. Furthermore, he said, but who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeared? For he is like a refiner fire, and like a fuller soap, and he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and 
reproach them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So if you look at the context of Malachi, it has nothing to do with a lady. Is that okay? From the very issue of the tithe and everything, it has nothing to do with a common believer. It has everything to do with the priest and the Levite. When God speak in the book of Malachi, he was speaking directly to the messengers, to them that are supposed to be as ministers of our time. Of course, in the New Testamental culture, everybody is given their right and privilege to be messengers of the gospel. But in time past, not everybody can wake up and say, Thus says the Lord. It's not possible. In fact, if you wake up and say, God speak to you, you may not live the next day. Because you see, people may even come to kill you. Because if what you say, God speak, did not happen tomorrow, they will kill you. So they were very careful enough to checkmate that falsehood does not have a few day. And that was why Old Testament is very strict. It's very, very strict. They operate according to a well-defined code and conduct, not like now that we are in grace and everybody do as he pleases. At that time, if God did not speak, God did not speak. If you don't see anything, you don't see anything. So it was within those kind of moments that prophet like Malachi were speaking. But Malachi did not really speak about what he see, but he's speaking about what will come. Because there was really no much visionary expression to his communication as a prophet. There was just more of looking at the pinpointing of prophecy and he was giving a definition of what will happen. So he was trying to just let them understand that yes, we are going into a dark age, but just know that the time cometh where God will have to be able to send messengers that will be able to prepare our heart for the coming of the Messiah. Because when they speak about the coming of the Lord himself, they are speaking about the coming of Christ. But prior before that time, messengers have to be sent to set the heart of people aright for the coming of that message. Because the challenge is not his coming, but can they be able to discern when he's coming? Because the problem is many people were actually really available when Jesus Christ came, but most of them did not subscribe to him. And you may as well say, if you are in the time of Jesus, you will support him. It's a lie. You may actually be part of the people that will be fighting him. The same way today, God has sent messengers to each and every one of us, and yet again we have cast them because, you see, Israel has a history of killing prophets. Israel has a history of kind of uh, fighting those that God has sent to help them. So the question there is, when he appears, will you actually be part of them that will be standing in the respect to him? So, he said, if you look also further, you will discover that one of the things that it is the expectation of God is to ensure that before they go into the dark ages, there was something that really happened. The totality of Christianity as we have then, of course, expressed in the Jewish custom, which is the culture of the Israeli, it was truncated. There was no longer righteousness in view. There were all kinds of darkness that beclouded the worship in that, in that past. So, a time came that God was not factoring whatever they do. And so the Lord has to find a way to restore men back to righteousness. And he cannot be able to do that because men have given themselves off to all kinds of things. And so many of them need to be purged. Many of them need to be purified. Many of them need to be cleansed. Many of them, they need, they need to a certain level of washing. And you see, at that point, God himself could not be able to do it because men have really, fully rebelled against him. So it became a cry of the prophet. It became the cry of the few remnant that were still remaining that God sent again revival. Because what they are looking for is God to come again. Anytime God comes is what we call revival so that men can be awakened again to righteousness. Because as of that time, there was all kinds of darkness going on there. And men could not perceive God. Anytime God withdrew himself out of the scene is because men are darkened in understanding. So long as there can be light there, God can still be speaking. But when it comes to a point where everybody cannot hear God again is because righteousness does not have a feeling. It is actually on the righteousness that is holy. And so it became the cry of one of the prophets that God appear again. But God gave him a consolation that I will appear again, but according to a said determined time. But the problem of the prophet now is that when he appeared with the sons of Levi, which are the actually priests that are supposed to be closer to the Lord, because they actually serve in the temple. So if God should appear, where will God appear first in the temple now, right? So when you see the context there is that the sons of Levi in the temple, they need to be able to see God first before they can now tell others. But these sons of Levi themselves are darkened and understand they need to be purified. Why? Because in that their time, they are offering incense that are profane. 
Their sacrifices are not accepted before God. Why? Because God has trusted them and all of them are liars. The temple, as we know, is that time. You see, the ark of the covenant and everything have been taken away. Is that not true? And that is why all of them lie that God is there, but God is not there because God was not appearing and righteousness was not there. If you see a man that lives righteous, it's because God is factor in his heart. So as long as the covenant and the temple of the Lord is taken away and the ark of the covenant is not there, how can the righteousness have a few days? So Malachi eh, was, the prophet was trying to let them understand God is not among us at all, but we believe he will appear again. But for God to appear in the Israel, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the house of Israel, God must appear in the heart of men. But the men that God must appear first are the messengers, which are the Levites. Because the Levites are actually supposed to be the ones that serve in the temple. They are the ones that have the right and the privilege to do the business of God. They are the ones that carry out priesthood. Because every kind of laws and litigation that governs the operations of God upon the face of the earth was a constitution given to the Levites. And every other tribe does not have that privilege. Every other tribe has a kind of strength. But anything that has to do with devotion to God, it must come to a Levite. But we are in a situation at a time when even the sons of the Levite, they themselves, you see, they are profanes. They are liars. Because the high priest and all of them knew that God is not there and yet they are doing ceremonial worship. And every day they go to temple to worship, but there was no God there. The Ark of the Covenant is not there. And it was stolen. But what concerns me so much is that, do you know that nobody touches the Ark of the Covenant and remain the same? But how come thieves came and stole the Ark and nothing happened? That means the strength of the Ark eh, is to the degree to the intention of the purification of the people that service it. So if the ark of the Lord was stolen, it's because God has left there. God does not dwell in the ark. God has left because when God saw that the, the men are sold out, eh, he left. So when he left, the ark become nothing. Because the temple of the Lord can become a house of disco and party. A church can become anything. A church can become a, an occultic center if God is not there. So but the cry of a prophet is that when he appears, because we know he will appear. Because God's intention is to appear in the heart of men, appear in our region. But this thing is not made possible eh, if the heart of men is not willing enough to be able to accept him. Because God can only find expression on the earth if there is a recipient, if there is a conduit to where he can be able to do it. Because God has to be tabernacle in the heart of men. But this was not possible because there was no a people, there was no a situation to be able to host him. Because if God is hosted in an ark, he cannot be stolen. In fact, if you touch it with that, because God is holy. And anybody that is anything less than that can come close there. It will judge you naturally. Because when the holiness of God appears, the glory comes. When the glory comes, it judges you. So you begin to cry for help. But when thieves come to steal it, you just know that something is wrong. It means that God has left. And because they knew that God has left, so they begin to do a lie. Because they know people actually need something to bow to. So they cover a veil and they ensure that people keep coming to bow in the name that there is God there. I now see why God brings the Old Testament to an end. Why? Because the people are lying to them. I don't know how long they have been lying. They have been lying for so long that God is with them, but God is not there. So God, see, the only way for me to help you is to shut down. I will stop speaking for the next 400 years until the messenger will come. But in the days of the coming of that messenger, we hope that they can be able to discern, to be able to align and partner with him. The sons of Levi need to be purified again so that they can be able to perceive God again. And we are also at such a time right now where the sons of Levi, which are the messengers of the Lord, need to still be purified again. Mind you, two things are supposed to be done. Number one, they are supposed to be refined. Number two, they are supposed to be purified. What is the difference between purification and, uh, and refinement? One speak about alignment. That means they are out of scale. So they need to, they, are, they have to be chiseled out some excesses out of their lives. Then they cannot be washed again. So there are some clothes that look dirty, but they are aligned. They fit you very well. So even if you wear a dirty clothes that fit you, it's still wrong. But there are some clothes that look very nice, but they are oversized. So what do you need to do? You need to. So they need the sons of Levite, which are the pastors, which are the prophets, which are the priests that said, Thus says the Lord, they need to be refined and be purified. If not, God cannot be seen among them and God cannot be seen without them. So when he appears. But when the Lord appears, actually you are going to be like him. 
Because God is afraid to appear in the heart of those wicked people because when he appears, they will make him look like a liar. Because their heart posture is wrong. Because when God appears, there are a few things that must happen. I, like I say, it's a church I'm giving, just a church. When God appears, the first thing he do is to come for you. When God appear, anytime the Lord appear to any man, he comes for him. When God comes for you, oftentimes, he comes to defend you. He comes to support you. Mind you, God did not give up on Israel no matter how wicked they are. Most times he comes for them. There are times when they are in a situation where they need his help, he still comes. How do you think God preserved the culture of Israel even after all of those times? Mind you, he was still coming for them just that they do not fully, totally see how he was coming for them because at that time, he was actually really coming for them to keep them as a house. The same way that when God gave a body that a king be sent to the bush, he turned him to an animal and allowed him to be in the bush for many years. According to scripture, nobody assumed friendship. Is that not true? When Nebuchadnezzar was removed as a king, she be normally they should put another king now. But nobody could actually become another king. Why? Because God ensured that that kingdom is preserved. So, at adventure, they tried to put somebody else, and at night, the person died. So, they tried another one. He died. They say nobody wants to become a king again. Why? Because God comes for the kingdom to preserve it. So, the same way that your life may look the way it is, you may be so carnal, but God can still be coming for you. He's protecting you. Accident will happen. Everybody will die. He will still come for you because he's still appearing for you. He knows that he's coming for you so that he knows that one day is one day. So oftentimes the appearance of the Lord comes for you. And when God comes for you, he comes to defend you. He comes to protect you. He comes to guide you. He comes to keep you. Believing in hope, in anticipation that one day, one day is one day. You can be purified and you can be refined. At least fit for the master's use. Because so far so good, many sons of the Levi right now, God is just coming for them. He's just trying his best to see that they are still alive. Because the Bible speaks about a time where even the sons of, is it Eli? They offer strange incense. Strange incense. Strange incense. Because sacrifice is not sacrifice until it's accepted. So you must be able to checkmate. Of course, don't be too happy about God coming for you. Yet I do this, but the Lord still, you know, is the mercy of God. Oh God, calm down. God is still coming for you. That's good. But you see, don't lose this. Don't lose that side of God coming for you. Somebody told me, Apostle, I'm too carnal, but anytime I pray, God answer. I say, God is coming for you. There is another dimension you have not known yet. Don't be too comfortable in that coming for you. Because oftentimes, when God comes for you, He's preparing you for a time where he will come to you. So when God appears, apart from coming for you, he can also come to you. When God comes to you, he actually comes to establish his covenant with you. He actually comes to fellowship with you. He actually comes to equip you, to educate you. When God comes to you, he's coming for oneness. He's coming for participation. Because God begins by coming for people before he now comes to them. If God has not come for you, he can't even come to you. Anybody that God has come, you see, the life of Saul was preserved by God, by God coming for him first. Because God has been appearing. But God was appearing to come for him. But a time came when God had to come to him. When God came to him at the appearance of the Lord, he asked, who art thou, Lord? But he, he had been hearing about the Lord for many times. So what I need to understand is that, of course, the preparing of God coming to you, come for God coming for you. But anytime God come to you, just know that that day you have come to the end of yourself. And what the prophet was crying about is that when will the Lord come to these people? Because so far so good, God has not come to them. So the appearance of the Lord guarantees that the Lord come to you. And anytime the Lord comes to you, he begins to draw you into the inner chambers. That is when deep begins to call unto deep. That is when intimacy and participation and sharing begin to come. That's when there's a longing, a crying within. You don't even know why you just love the Lord. And you're willing to give up a boyfriend for him. It's because the Lord has come. Now he has come as a lover. Now he has come as somebody that is willing to entice you. 
And now when you read the songs of Solomon, you now enjoy it because that was when the Lord was coming to his beloved. And at that point, the Lord began to draw you by love. And you can't even really understand. Yet, you are a sinner, but you are not crying. Anytime you do something wrong, you begin to feel bad. You don't know why you are feeling bad. God is coming to you. But when God is coming for you, you can still do like this and still be okay. But when he begins to come to you, now you begin to feel like, Kai, you know, I'm, I'm not supposed to be like this. I'm not because something is beginning to happen with you because God is coming to you. Because God is coming to you to make you become part of his messenger that he can use. Because the God of covenant, the Lord of covenant can only work with covenant men. And until he comes to you to establish a covenant to you, it's a waste of time. Everyone, Abraham, Moses, every God have to come to them. A time came, he began from coming for them, preserved Moses from when he was born, put him in the basket, and all kind, he was coming for him. But the day he came to him, he discovered that I am the God of covenant. And I have kept the covenant with your father for a long time. Now I'm coming to you to establish a covenant with you. That is the appearance of the Lord. If the Lord has not come to you, there can never be any covenant attached to your life and there cannot be consecration. There cannot be need for separation. The day the Lord come for Abraham, at that day Abraham knew that he was supposed, he's not supposed to be part of his father's lineage. Has the Lord come to you yet? I know the Lord has been coming for you. You are still living the way you want and God has been keeping you. But you must prepare yourself for the day that the Lord will come to you. And in the day that God come to you is a day of encounters. It's a day of reckoning. At that day, you will ask, who art thou, Lord? And what will you have me do? When the Lord appears, he comes to men. And when God comes to men, he comes to establish a covenant with men. Because until God establishes a covenant with you, he can never work with you. The Bible says, gather ye my people who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. That means gather these people that I have come to them specifically, strategically. Because until the Lord comes to a people, he cannot sit upon the seat of a refiner to begin to purify them. Because until he comes to you, he cannot see the need to do anything in you. Some Boko Haram, God is still preserving them. He's still coming for them. But the day he come to them, they will become pastor, they will become preacher. They will be more serious than you. Why? Because the Lord. That is why you wonder somebody that was so carnal. And one day he wake up and he was a preacher. How? God came to him. And when the Lord come to you, he come to align with the covenant of ancient past. When he appears, he come to us. And that is why we are upon the mountain of encounter so that God can come to us. And all through the time of the sons of the patriarch, they have seen what happens with God with their fathers, but they have not seen it happen to them. In the day the Lord come to them, they realize the covenant in time pass. So you must be able to understand that you must always prepare your heart for the coming of the Lord. And because in the day of the coming of the Lord to you, in that day God come to establish a covenant. The question is this, what covenant has the Lord established with you? Because there is nobody that God has ever worked with that God has not established a covenant with. Has the Lord ever spoken anything to you that means anything serious? There is nobody that God has ever appeared to that God not tell him something he ought to do, something to leave, something to break. Oh, God must do, there must be something. But you see, you, your life doesn't have any regulation. But even the Ten Commandments is very hard to obey. That one is the one that is standard for everybody. So if you see, take your life now and see Ten Commandments is very hard, you know that you are still out of the coming. Because you don't even belong where you can even, if you appear, you won't be within the rider. But adventure, of course, you are past that criteria. You must know that far beyond that, God will still come to you to establish another covenant. And in the days you come and make that covenant, whether you live and you die without fulfilling any of it, another generation will rise in your name to fulfill it. Because the coming eh, of God to men establish a transgenerational covenant. You see, when you see people talk about generational idols, transgenerational causes, it's because a devil came for people. Maybe your, your grandfather sat with some Akongo. Away again. Where are the what is the name of the gods in your family? I was at Kagonko. Kagonko, they have snakes. Maybe their grandfather had to sit together with snakes to play and dance. And when they were dancing, they were promising the snakes the moon. And everything that concerns them. Because you see, our fathers serve idols and they serve it very seriously. And when they were serving, they, they were promising the idols generation to come. They include your name there and they put it inside there. So the day those demons, those devils come to you, <laughs> they are trying to let you understand that you belong to me. You don't know how, but your, your, your fathers, your fathers, and some of them is, you see, uh, just for, 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 for two bars of yam, 
that they covenant themselves with idols. Say, so God of our lands, I want to have bounty harvest of Yam. All my generation will serve you. God of our lands, I want to have this palm kernel. Let it be food this year. All my children, my children, children will serve you. God of our land, that is how he did. Let me have this better palm wine, palm wine. And let me be the greatest palm wine tapper in this village for all my generation. And they don't know that you go to US in time to come. So far as they are concerned. So he came to the idol. And whether you like it or not, your name is there. And if the Lord did not come to you to take away and establish a new covenant with you, that's why your life will be the way it is. An average of us walk differently in perpetual alignment to darkness until the covenant is reintroduced. Because if any man that God did not come to him is in alignment, a full perfect alignment with the devil. It will require a different kind of torrent to push you away from what is normal. Because what is normal is carnal. Everything that is abnormal is spiritual. That's why you say we say we are not normal. What we mean is that, you see, what will make you not to be normal? Being, coming to this mountain, you are not normal. No, it's true. Just know you are not normal. All of us are not normal. What are you looking for? <laughs> when are Christmas with you? Christmas with you. you are not normal. But you see, these are the things that make God come to you. And when everybody in the village is doomed for dying, you will leave. The last thing is a charge. Apart from God coming for you, God coming to you, God, this one is only ranking men. It's when God have done these two ones that they do this one. God come against you. You see, if God comes for you, God comes to you, the next point is he begin to come against you. I've got to rebuke you before. It was very painful. Maybe you saw that 10,000 and you wanted to steal it. And God said, Kai! Please don't do like this. Mm. When you like that guy and you just want to move like every other person, say, Mm-mm. daughters of covenant, don't do like this. You see, God is coming against you. Because at that point now, he's not even interested in what you feel again. When God looked upon Moses, he said, Moses, Kai! I know you are a man after you are a good man, but this one is wrong. He's coming against you. And when God begins to come against you because he wants to, he wants to purge you. He wants to purify you. He wants to refine you. Because when God only comes for you and comes to you and refuses to come against you, you will not be you won't be okay. Because there are days that you will lose God. Because the affinities of darkness is strange. It's very, very strange. So in the days when David decided to go on vacation, you know, spiritual vacation is dangerous. They come in from the U.S. Apostle, you have preached for so long. Come! I come and rest. There are beaches. We take you to beaches. <laughs> My mind went through David. Now when kings went for war, eh? David sat at home and he crossed his leg like this. And he was taking Jevita. And that was how he behold the damn cell. I see, when people are warning you, you are sitting at home taking Jevita, there's every probability that you will, you will do something stupid. See, but I don't need prophets to tell you that if you are not here, you will sin within these five days. Do you realize that? Uh-uh. There are so many allotments of sins. You may lose God in your concentration. But you see, because you are here, eh, the rules and the regulations here will we, we reduce the chances of you. Maybe your sin will be disobedient that we say, don't do that, don't sleep, you sleep. Because if to him who knows what to do, I refuse to do, to him is a sin. So even if you refuse to pray, you are sin in this place. <laughs> this is how prayerlessness is sin now. When God begins to come against you, He comes to rebuke you. He comes to you see the Bible said any son that will judge chastisement is a bastard. One of the hardest points you can ever come to in this is to become a bastard. Not a bastard to men, bastard to God. Before you have a biological father, spiritual father, you have a father in heaven. And if that father in heaven does not know you, the father on earth can't save you. 
if that one call you a bastard, you are already a bastard. But if this one here call you bastard, there are people that their parents say you will fail. To me, I have caused you. But they still succeed. Why? Because they are chastised from heaven. When God begins to come against you, it's because he looks at your life and he has to be able to purify certain things, to correct certain things. So all the rebukes that God is giving to you, all the prints God is printing you, all those things God is, is chastising you so that you can become a good son, a good daughter. But if you neglect those things and walk in disobedience, you see, you will never see the Lord appear again. At the end of disobedience, silence the voice of God. Obedience, eh? Make the voice of God clearer. People that only disobey God don't hear God. If you want to hear God, no, obey Him. Disobedience will always silence. It doesn't matter how powerful you are. Your disobedience will silence the voice of God. You never even know when you will die in a common accident. Because in the days when you are supposed not to go out, you will still go out. It's disobedient. It's silent. But it's obedient, sharpen your discernment. When a man obey God, his discernment is so, is so sharpened. When God comes against you, he comes to make you become better. Because he will appear. But when the Lord appears, these three things are in view. He either come for you, he come to you, or he come against you. But either way, you must be able to subscribe to this protocol to ensure that you become a better person. Can you pray one minute and ask the Lord and say, Father, appear again in my life. I know you have silent the voice, but uh, Father, appear. Now I will hear. Because when he appeared, you appeared, some things will go. You will lose some things. But you will still gain some things. You will gain some things. Wise men are willing to allow God to, if they are willing to. I know you went for a vacation and suddenly you don't even know why you were so excited and you dance, you dance Naramadi. You now dance whiskey. You don't even know why you, you just love carnal things after the vacations. You need the Lord to appear again. That's why you are upon here to retreat again. So that you can, all those excesses of the flesh, all those carnality need to go. You cannot become better like this. No, God needs to rebuke you. Who are you? God needs to rebuke you. You must be corrected. You must be chastised. You must be rebuked. You are a bastard before God. You are a vagabond. You don't belong anywhere. Ask the Lord to appear to you again. Appear, appear, appear for me. Appear. Appear to me. Appear against me. I'm okay with it. Come for me. Come to me. Come against me. Either way, I'm okay. Many of you, God has come to you. All kinds of encounters. Yet, yeah, the day he rebuke you, you're angry. No. So, God, I am willing to accept whatever it is. God is your Lord. is your God. Strong men are men that obey. They are men of covenant that obey. You are powerful to the degree to which you obey God. How many more minutes? Yes, pray, pray, pray. Father, come for me. Come against me. Come to me. <laughs> Concentrated men are men of covenant. Concentrated men are men of covenant.
Baba Bala Babas Baba Bala Babas Kabrada Babula Tate Bala Baba Ladias Kota Baba la bebos kablo de baba la dia. Baska bebe la babola ta baba la dia skatate. Monta babola tate. Hallelujah. That's the first stage. Let's go to the second stage. After this protocol has been put in place, now you have left that level of people in Malachi now. Let's go to the people in the new covenant. The people in Malachi are rebellious people. And now God has come. And if God has called, the next thing you must be able to understand is that now the messengers of the gospel are you. The word messengers, according to that scripture, is the word we call, you can call it an angel. The word messenger can only be referred to as an apostolos. The word messenger can also be referred to as a representative. So it's not too far from what you are thinking. It's still you. But at the point where the prophet was speaking, they were not qualified to be referred to as messengers of the gospel. And that was why they are praying that God sent another. It's a challenge. When God is looking for a man to use and you are there and you are not valuable enough to be used, it's a very big challenge. It's a very big challenge. You see, go with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1. 